Uh, I'm Kevin Brooks. I am the Chief of Staff for ServiceNow Global Public Sector Business Line and a 26 year Air Force Force Support Officer. So I've got some background in both EX and you know, HR. And I'm here today to have a, we're gonna have a little conversation. Me and, you know, me and Brian, uh, Brett and I are gonna have a chat. So I'm gonna go to the next slide and he can then introduce himself as I go through some questions. It's interactive. Um, you know, we're gonna obviously have some questions we're gonna talk about, but I love questions at the end. Uh, I know I'm the, we're the last thing between you and cocktails. So we'll try to keep it energetic. <laughs> so you all are, are engaged and make it worthwhile. Yeah. Let's see. So Brett, uh, let's just start off like, you know, to first introduce yourself, what you do. And, yeah. yeah. So my name is Brett Einseidler. Um, I too was in the Air Force, only did my four year stint and got out. Um, made the transition over to HR from public health. Um, not too crazy, but you know, admin, admin, all the way. Um, been at Kessel Run for about two and a half, almost three years now. It's been a really interesting journey. Never thought I would kind of transition into an HR role, um, but really my focus during this time has been employee experience, making the journey as smooth as possible for every person coming in, no matter what your affiliation is. And so, uh, yeah, that's really what I do. Cool. So start off, you know, what is Kessel Run and what type of talent do you need to run that organization? Yeah, so Kessel Run, um, if you look on our website, it will give you the, the textbook definition, the, the definition by the Air Force of being a system program office for, <laughs> you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I don't know all the technical things <laughs> that we do every day to fend off the warfighter and stuff like that. What Brett's definition is, we're a software factory for the Air Force. We make systems for the warfighter to do their jobs. I don't need to know what those are. I need to employ the people to do that. <laughs> um, so that's really what we do. But we have contractors, military members, um, civilians. I'm a, I'm a federal civilian. Just the, uh, the wide range, every category you think of whenever you think of you know, working in the government. Um, and so that's been a real challenge of looking at what that looks like and how each journey is different across those different sectors, but to make an enterprise approach from it as well. So little who, who are your main competitors for talent? Our main competitors for talent are just Google. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ServiceNow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those other places that can, can pay well, but do not have the direct impact to the mission and the warfighters. That is our, our thing that we are able to really push um, and get some incredible talent directly from the pipeline of military members and people transitioning out of the military. But, but our, our, our main competitors are really, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, everyone else that is enticing them with the, the, the monetary values. And, and okay. yes, we, we do try to pay well and try to, you know, work the line of what, what is uh, equitable. Um, but it's also, we, we are at the heart of the warfighter. Yeah. We, we are a direct mission partner for air operation centers across the entire globe. And we're expanding rapidly too. That's awesome. So tell me what you guys, what, you, what do you do every day? How do you, so we explain the mission, yeah. you know, the importance of that, the talent hunt. So yeah. what do you, what's your plug-in role? In that? Yeah, so I have two roles, um, an HR business partner, pretty straightforward, just kind of working with senior leaders across the organization, understanding where their, their pitfalls are, how I can interject, how I can make sure that the HR teams, the talent teams are kind of working alongside them to make sure that we're actually hitting the mark. Um, and then the portion that brings me into service now is I'm pretty much the employee, um, the enterprise employee workflow manager. So I kind of oversee all of the case managers, so to speak, the administrators who kind of do day-to-day -day case management and ensure that we are from the day someone is hired to the day they leave, that we are able to transition properly. And that's where most of my day works. I, I am always, you know, assisting the IT staff for, um, you know, new features or whatever to make sure our processes are smooth or I'm going into cases and assisting the case managers and then reporting up to leadership on how effective we're being, how, how quick we're doing things. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I do. Okay. And so in all of that thing you just lifted there, which is quite exhausting, uh, give me some of your pain points that, you know, in a typical day that just... You know, yeah, like so that. I, I would say I... I, I you asked this question before I got the, the list and I was thinking, okay, well, I've had a, a variation of pain points, right? 
before service now and after service. <laughs> <laughs> so before, you know, our, our, we had no understanding of a process. We didn't really understand what our journeys were. We didn't know who our people were, where they were, what they were doing, and how to get them appropriately, the systems and, and business operational things that they need. Um, so that was my big pain point going into this. Um, and just the, the complexity of the DOD, the Air Force specifically, the, our MAGCOMs, our major commands, you know, you have all these different bureaucratic layers, and then how do we fit into that, and how do we make it smooth for the employee? You know, understanding those complex layers was, has always been a pain point for myself, myself and others. And so now my pain points are very different. My pain points are how do I effectively get that per- that that process, you know, fine tuned to make sure that we're not hitting bottlenecks because we already understand all of those things that I just listed. We, we've looked at it wholeheartedly. We've taken years to do this and to really understand A to Z what that process looks like in the journey from, you know, I don't like cradle to grave, but <laughs> especially in an employee cycle. But, um, you know, <laughs> hire them, to retire. yes, hire to retire. Okay. And, and um, so my pain points now are just looking at the the effectiveness of our products and yeah. how we can do it better and better and better and make it simpler for everyone. That's awesome. That's good. Thank you. So kind of staying in the same lane, you know, so do you have any thoughts on how to get, how we create a work environment that fosters that productivity that you obviously need as a software factory, yeah. gives people a sense of mission so that mm-hmm. Google doesn't snatch them up <laughs> and positive employee experience? Yeah, I, I definitely think that it, we have to look at them together. You know, the employee experience and pro- high productivity are hand in hand, like 100%. Yeah. If you've been in any of the other sessions today, you've heard that from other people way higher <laughs> than me <laughs> and the Air Force and DOD and other government agencies that are saying the exact same thing, that they're, they're, they have a synergistic approach to it. Um, and so for me personally, I, I think that, you know, leading with empathy is a huge, you know, you need to understand where your people are and, and who they are in order to, to hopefully get some high productivity out of them. If you don't even have that, then you're going to fail, right? That is from me, what I think. And then I, I, as I've grown and as I've, you know, went higher in rank and, and, and leadership roles and things, I've really noticed that um, something that's super, super important in how we create that environment is vulnerability, being open to having those hard discussions when things do not go our way, we don't get what we want. That, that to me has been so helpful. You know, we can read leadership books all day to find the best, best ways to do whatever project management or whatever you want to do. But if you don't know who your people are and you're not treating them well and you're not being vulnerable with them yourselves, then how are you going to get a high producing employee out of them? That's good. So you, you mentioned that, you know, the high performing, uh, you know, employees, the leadership you've modeling. And so give me some examples of the experience that you think contribute most to that engagement and productivity. So what are some of the things that you as an organization or any organization could do? Yeah. So timeliness. I think is huge. And timeliness is very broad, right? Mm -hmm. Timeliness in responding to emails, even if it's to say, hey, I don't have this answer and I'm going to find it for you. That is an answer in itself. Timeliness to a customer, timeliness to your employees is extremely helpful because we all don't like that limbo period. Um, Looking at uh, the vulnerable, like, um, sorry, I'm like blanking. (laughs) Take your time. (laughs) I don't know why I'm blinking right now. It's okay. You're Anyways, um, I just think there's yeah. many, many things, and I, I think I probably yeah. just added it to it to the previous yeah. one. But um, you know, those those types of really knowing your people when you yeah. when you're getting into that. Yeah. So and it's kind of going down the lane and not really one of the questions we talked about in prep. But so how do you think technology can help that journey you just talked about? How do you think? Give me some tools. But we're going to not, not Kessel oh, Run. I want your yeah. opinion because, you know, you're yeah. an HR professional and, you know, you are exactly where rubber meets the road. Yeah, yeah. Being able to, to access information quickly and efficiently in any space, no matter what you're talking about, whether you're talking about, like, um, leave balances, <laughs> how do I promote, like, any of those types of places where you're going to look at a knowledge-based article or whatever it is, 
um, access to information is key and at the forefront of that. Um, to me, as an employee, I, I always think, you know, okay, what would I want? I, am I going to benefit from this? Yeah. If I would, then let's see if it's going to help other people. And, and um, maybe I'm wrong. And maybe it's not the correct way to go. But let's find the best ways to access that information or, or give them the, the things that they actually want. Great. So now if that's your opinion. Now let's take it one level higher. So how, what is ServiceNow? How is ServiceNow? So let's get specific yeah. to you know, why we're here. Uh, our approach to connecting systems, helping Kessel Run to address your human capital challenges writ large. Yeah, so I, I really thought about this for a while. And, and my best answer is, I don't know if ServiceNow will like this answer, but um, I see it for us. We don't need an HRIS system, but it acts like that for us. It acts like the information system for our data because we have so many levels of data mm -hmm. and, and variations of it from der various different sources that we can't always consistently access or there's only a few people that can. So we're able to bring that down. And so that's what ServiceNow is able to do for us. We're able to bring that down so we can actually operationally move the data to do what we want, to bring people on quickly, to give them access to business systems quickly, to get them ready to get provide the services to the warfighter as quickly as possible. That's really our mission. It's, that's, yeah. As HR in an organization like this, that's what we're to do. And ServiceNow has been instrumental in that. Why would you think I wouldn't like that answer? That's, that's, that's a great I, answer. Because that's you're not an HRIS awesome. system. No, so no. Like, and some people and we, will get touchy with those those. No, those I, I, I understand that. So I think Workday <laughs> might get up that. that. We, we are a platform. So we, if we can replace yeah. something or make it easier for you to access that, that's absolutely the ease we want to bring yeah. to your life. So. And, and the, the, the way that we are able, I, I was talking to someone at the lab the other day about, they were discussing how they're trying to go away from SharePoint and yeah. trying to get, yeah. heavily away from it. I I don't personally don't like SharePoint that much, but you know, as a federal employee <laughs> that absolutely. is mandated by Congress <laughs> in certain aspects to maintain a SharePoint site, uh, we are unable to do that. So being able to pull it in, being able to have a portal that is able to have that information in those those specific places that we require our employees to go in one place. Oh my goodness. You know, we yeah. can't just get rid of SharePoint. We can't get rid of PowerPoint and all those things that sometimes make us mad. Uh, we can make them better and give them greater access. And I think that's that's what ServiceNow is able to do for us. That's awesome. Have you noticed a uh, an increased ability to report status faster up the chain? <laughs> yeah. It, it's actually great that I'm able to um, hand my chief of staff and the chief of talent, who's my direct supervisor, a, a dashboard of them their own <laughs> and say, here, this is for you. I don't need to tell you all day, every day. If you would like me to, I will. But this is the operational data right now of what's going on, how we're effectively doing this. And you can ask me, we can work with it. We can change the aspects of it. And I think that has been so amazing, having the, the real data right there. And I, I forget who was saying it yesterday or earlier, about not copying, pasting PowerPoints. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just being able to show that data immediately right there and having them be able to access it without having to go through me as well. Absolutely. Okay, so again, just to make sure this is not a ServiceNow commercial, <laughs> tell us what we're not doing right and how we can improve. <laughs> I think that, oh, that's a, that's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, put you on the spot there. I think this is a great point. Increased communication, but so so we were talking earlier in some of the other panels and the, the luncheon about the DOD employees wanting access to, to greater information yep. to share. And someone had commented about, oh, are there abilities to share code? Like, you know, without going to the store, without making a, a, a spoke or an API that's in the store, ways to trade that information easily without us having to create an entire ecosystem of conversation. I think that's something to look at and there's ways to do that. And I think having you guys push us and allow us that platform would be extremely helpful because we, we have to, you know, a lot of times 
we're constrained by resources. Yeah. And so we don't maybe don't have the manpower or the, the personnel or the, the money to do something like that to hire developers to tell us these, these amazing things and give us that information. But we can share it amongst ourselves. But I don't know who all the customers are. Yeah. You guys do. So that that's yeah. that's something that that would be extremely helpful. Th that's very fair. Um, you know, and the role that I'm in, the organization that I'm in, was created to start helping share use cases across government yeah. agencies globally. So that's a point that is very fair, and we've taken that to, to heart. Yeah, so. and I will say that what you guys have done in the special instance groups has been really helpful for me, but the 15 or so people that know about it and come quarterly, yeah. that's who it's benefiting, yeah. not everyone else, the 100-some people that were in that room that may not know that it exists or that they might not have found it helpful that one time that they went. Yeah, that's good. So, you know, so I'm out of question. So you guys are now <laughs> interactive part. This is where we're going to go. Do we have mics? Awesome. So I, and there's got to be questions because, you know, this is your last chance to ask tough ones. That's why I asked the tough one first, just to kind of understand. Or just, you know, any comments, any questions? So, no. And this, I'll tell you the reason why. Because we have our own system, we go through Gmail for most of our. So, so we're a federal agency. However, we we do go through a couple different back channels, <laughs> and we have a Google suite of most of our business systems. We still do the Nipper side of things, where we have you know Microsoft Teams and stuff like that. So, we personally have not needed to go that route as as of now, because the majority of our workforce works off of MacBooks and Gmail and things like that. Because we have such a high um, development staff that don't require, you know, basic, you know, Windows systems. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you gave yourself this responsibility and I'm sure you shared the responsibility. <clears throat> you talk about sharing between agencies every single signal and later Yeah, I think that that's definitely a good good avenue to look at. Uh, you know, from a customer perspective, it's definitely something that's like, you know, I, I found out today a few people that I was chatting with all use the same partner, implementation partner, the same people that are already FedRAMP certified that are already going through the same process. So they can be that that pivot point. I think that's an actual, that's a great point. We could yeah. look at that. I mean, we... we uh, Oh yeah, uh, looking at uh, going with our implementation partners and people that are, are FedRAMP certified already to kind of maybe bridge that gap of communication for the the spreading of knowledge. How I saw it, correct? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions out there? So uh, I've got you for sixteen more minutes, and I'm not going to keep you for sixteen more minutes. <laughs> but I will say. Um, you know, what the Kessel Run is doing is, is, is very, very progressive by Air Force standards. Uh, as I said, I did Air Force HR for 26 years. And uh, there's a couple things out there that are still dirty words in a lexicon of personnel yeah. people in the Air Force that I was responsible for, so I won't say them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the things they're doing are, are cutting edge, and they're really pushing hard to elevate the employee experience. And they have to because they have they have a kind of workforce that they do have to compete against Silicon Valley for. You know, I mean, there's always a competition for talent, period. But when you're comp competing against, you know, companies that give signing bonuses, that give stocks, they give stock refresh, they hire at a pretty high rate, um, there has to be a sense of mission. And in order for folks to care about that mission, you have to treat them well and make sure their experience is there. So there you go. I, Uh, just in terms of our, our employee workforce? Yeah, and the, and 
Oh, okay. So, um, you know, we were actually having that conversation about like, <laughs> we have agents that are doing case management for, for HR cases or IT cases and stuff like that. And we haven't tapped in as much as we should to the things we've already paid for in terms of, of, of skill services. You know, myself as the, the highest HR person that is in the, in the weeds sometimes, you know, I've gone through those, ca- those courses, but it, the majority of our staff in terms of that administrative staff are contracted staff. So it's a little difficult when we're requiring them to take trainings that's not per the contract and stuff. So we do have a little bit of that. However, in the context of, of the direct civilian force that we have a little more in the military members, uh, a little more leverage over, um, we make it mandatory for some of them that are actually in those roles to to take the time out and do those courses. We also have many um, learning you know, platforms that we have invested in, not only by the Air Force, uh, you know, Defense University is, is a large one that's been a conglomerate for many people, um, but, uh, you know, Udacity for specific upskilling training and things like that, that we have offered to our employees. And, and it, it's like the boot camp classes and we'll also pay for the certification. You just have to pass the class first. And, and we give that to our entire workforce. So they're able to tap into those resources to make themselves more competitive as well. I think hand went over here. So um, I'll take this out of the way. Um, what was your, what, what were you, what were your hands like when you chose an Air Force Preference place? I was a 4E, okay. public health. So I was a public health technician that got essentially promoted to the OIC <laughs> during the pandemic because everyone deployed. It was very wild. Do you want my terminal AFC <laughs> or you want the history? <laughs> so I was a 38F. Yeah. I was an Air Force contractor for about 20 plus years. Yeah. Um, my question is, and I'm working with uh, intelligence agency, two specifically, ODI and Um My question is, and, and we've had this, we've had the in terms of HR modules, kind of where we started with this. So what was the first in terms of, because that's where you kind of, you yeah. find that, that use case yeah. that then you add the value. Absolutely. With this customer, we started with their external hiring process, and the reason we needed it, yeah. because we're on the high side, right? Yeah. But most of the data, their data is on the low side, so yeah. we had to build something in on the high side to then allow them yeah. to be able to do business yeah. there and, and go through the hiring process, because most of their senior people, people were basically, you know, approving those external hiring process. Yeah. Um, and for those that don't speak the language, high side meaning like the secure side of things, the, the ones that's harder to tap into. Um, so for us specifically, you know, onboarding was our first. That was our biggest. Um, so when I first kind of looked, came on to Kessel Run, I was transitioning out of the Air Force and uh, needed something to do for six months. And um, I came over to a colleague of mine that I had known who happens to be my boss now. And she said, fix onboarding, please. Can you can you figure it out? Can you figure out what we do, and how we do it and what we're doing? Um, so I spent about a year <laughs> understanding, you know, it turned from six months to a year, understanding from A to Z what that process looked like because we have all of those different personas that, that all have varying different needs. Um, so I, I did that upon myself and then took it to GitLab at the time. We used that for our project manager for DevSecOps types of stuff as well. Um, and that was what we agreed that we were currently doing our onboarding ticketing from, which you know seems weird when you look at it and you think about it, but it actually worked really well because we were able to put everyone in one place. And GitLab themselves as a company they do it there. They have their own ticketing, and then but it integrates with their HRIS and integrates with all of their other systems. That was the pit, the pivot point where we're like, okay, what we have now is unscalable. It's not going to work in the long term. So what can we do? Tasked by the CTO that came in to go and look at services and see what what options we had. And that's when we came around ServiceNow because we were already using it for IT services and various you know things in that nature. So, okay, let's see what we can do. And, you know, two and a half okay. years later, we have going strong. Okay. Sure. I know a lot of folks are sometimes slow to adopt new technology or maybe a little resistant yeah. to do so. Uh, when you were rolling out this new stuff for onboarding, did you uh, come to 
face any of that change. Absolutely. We still <laughs> face it every day. Absolutely. Uh, you know, organizational change management is at the forefront of everything that we do in HR. Like that is what, what we have to think about Absolutely. every single time we do anything. Okay, how are people going to react to this? And that goes back to the empathy piece, you know, like where are they? Are, are they understanding where we're coming with this new document requirement or whatever. So in this implementation, we absolutely have. But the thing that has been really instrumental from us is getting, you know, executive leadership sign off and, and, you know, sponsorship, having our leaders from our, we have a colonel who is our CEO type person um, and him as well as the other C-suite members have all signed off and agreed that this is the correct way to go. And so coming from them that, okay, your process may change a bit, but it's really just where you're going to be doing the work. The work is staying the same in whatever you're doing, pretty much. We, we may change a couple forms here and there. And so we absolutely have, but it's just been the tactful way of how we're presenting it to people. You know, having certain, you know, steering committees with specific people, um, subject matter experts to understand what the impact is to that direct team that may be having the biggest, um, you know, issues with the change. Um, that's been extremely helpful for us in understanding at what levels that we can have that impact. And sometimes they're right. Sometimes we do change something and it does not work. And that's the great thing about ServiceNow is being able to turn off services, turn off things that maybe didn't work. We had an MVP plan that we really thought out really well and it didn't pan out and the customers, our employees didn't like it. That We have to face that ourselves too. If it didn't work out and they were actually right, so understanding, you know, where they're coming from and, and those those uh, fears and anxiety that they bring. Okay. Time for one more question. Going once, going twice, it's a thirsty crowd. <laughs> okay. okay, folks, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I, I love the fact that even though I don't work HR anymore, <laughs> HR and the Air Force is in good hands. Uh, the next generation's taken over, so I can I can leave and. Be, be comfortable with that. Uh, and I want to thank you all here for coming to the ServiceNow Federal Forum. This is your last formal event of the day. Uh, please enjoy the hospitality uh, in, the, in the foyer and then of our partners later this evening if you're still around. And I'll, we'll stick around for a few minutes to ask any questions. So with that, thank you very much.